At this point, we've talked about all of these interesting features with Microsoft's Windows Server, uh, all these different roles and how they can serve the, uh, uh, the organization. So now that we have all this stuff running, we have to make sure that we have disaster recovery and backup in the event of a, uh, of a catastrophe. Um, which could you know, happen for a variety of reasons. So in this unit, we're going to talk about how to do those backups. And of course, the backups are not very useful unless we have a way to recover those. So we'll talk about how to go through the recovery steps. There are some new options available for online backups. We'll talk about using uh, Microsoft Azure to do backups. Uh, then we'll talk about uh, site-level disaster recovery and then configuring multi-site clustering which, uh, you know, instead of just clustering individual machines, which we talked about before, we'll talk about how to do uh, site-level clustering. So let's get started talking about server backups. So backups are necessary because lots of bad things can happen. We can have hardware failures, disk failures, volume corruption, uh, deletion of files, you know, people accidentally delete stuff, so human error, software failures, uh, you know, just something is wrong. We can't figure out what it is. Instead of spinning your wheels all night trying to fix something, it's sometimes it's just easier to back up to, uh, you know, recover a known, um, you know, a known backup. Or theft or disasters, uh, floods and fires and things like that. So all kinds of things can happen that we want to protect ourselves from. And that's what backups are all about. It's all about disaster recovery. So first, you need to install the Windows Server Backup and, and the Add, re, Add Roles and Features Wizard, just like we've done with everything else. Uh, so it's the Windows Server Backup uh, role, or feature rather, that you're going to install. So after installing, you can configure backups with the Windows Server Backup Console, the WB Admin Command Line Program, or some of the PowerShell commandlets that I'll show you at the end of this uh, slide deck. So you should assign the task of backing up servers to a reliable and responsible person. I remember when I was a kid, I worked at a, uh, I almost hate to admit it, but I worked at a Radio Shack when I was a kid. Uh, gosh, I was probably 17. And one of my jobs was to do backups every night on their uh, on the computer system in this Radio Shack store. And of course, being a 17-year-old kid, I probably did it about maybe 30% of the time that I worked there. I actually did the backups because they took a while. Um, so you know, sometimes it just didn't feel like it. So that probably wasn't the best choice for somebody to do backups, you know, to give it to a 17-year-old kid that really doesn't care too much about it. Um, so it's important, and, you know, backups are one of those things that, that people often forget about. It's easy to forget about backups. You don't really need them. They don't really affect anyone until you need it, right? So it's like having insurance. You know, nobody really wants to pay for insurance, but if you don't have it, uh, you know, it's when something bad happens is when you're going to regret not having it. Um, so by default, members of the local admin, backup operators, and server operators groups are going to be able to do backup and restore. So backup operators and server operators are, are given the rights to backup, and, uh, backup files and directories, restore files and directories, and shut down the system uh, if, if needed. So to configure backups, you've got some options. There's the full backup, which backs up all of the volumes. You have custom backup, where you can select which data you want to back up. Uh, you can do bare metal recovery, which is just critical volumes. Um, you could do system state, which backs up the boot files, Windows system files, and the registry. Uh, system reserved, which backs up the files on the system partition. And then individual volumes, which backs up only volumes that you selected, like the F drive or the D drive or something like that. Uh, you can specify the destination. It could be a dedicated hard disk. It could be uh, a volume somewhere. It could be a shared folder. So this is the screen where you would tell it which of these options. So again, you've got the bare metal recovery, uh, system state, system reserved, and then uh, which you know, and then in this case, there's an E drive and a C drive. Now, presumably, it looks like this uh, in this screenshot that the E drive is the dedicated disk to store the backup, and the C drive is the local disk. So theoretically, you could just back up the entire disk, but um, there certainly isn't a need to. In all cases, it depends what the server is being used for. In some cases, you can do just system state and system reserved, and you'll have everything that you need without backing up the full, uh, the full disk. So to perform a scheduled backup, you're going to click the backup schedule in the actions pane of the Windows Server Backup Console. And then you can choose from once a day or multiple times throughout the day. And by default, it's going to run at 9 p.m. once every day. Uh, but you have to uh, provide the destination that you want for the backup. And an external drive is preferable. You could also do a shared drive. Uh, or a dedicated drive in the system. But generally, you do not want to store the backups on the same drive uh, as the actual machine. Um, and I don't believe that with the backup utility even allow you to do that. 
All right, so this is what the screen looks like. So as you can see here, once a day, 9 p.m., that's the default, but you can do it more than once a day. You can choose a different time if it makes more sense. Uh, scheduling a backup is important because you don't want to have to rely on humans to do this every day. It's better if it's happening automatically. But if you do need to do a backup one time or just for some strange reason you have to do it, which I'll talk about that in a second, you could do a one-time backup, which creates a backup of the local volume uh, or a share. So backup begins immediately. Uh, and then you can use a uh, one-time backup for particular situations, such as before a software or hardware upgrade. Uh, so if you're doing any major changes in your infrastructure, that's generally a good time to do a one-time backup uh, so that you have something that you can go back to that's as close to, uh, as close to when you started as possible. Um, so that would be a good situation to do that. Or if you suspect that your backups are corrupt or anything like that. So backup performance can be optimized for backups of entire volumes. You can use the, uh, the Windows uses the volume shadow copy service to perform full volume backups. So VSS copies the volume block by block and makes a mirror image of the volume. So it's a block level copy as opposed to a file level copy, which are a little bit different, right? So file level is different than fi with file level. You're copying files with block level. It's bit by bit, right? Block by block. Windows server backup uh, uses the, uh, this image to create the backup. So here are the, uh, some of the options you have with the volume shadow copy service uh, to do some, uh, um, you know, some, to look to, to, for some performance options. So you can use the VS admin command line program to configure volume shadow copy service. So you can create and delete shadow copies and list existing shadow copies. You can also revert a volume to an existing shadow copy, which overwrites the volume on a previously created shadow copy. So there's some of the options with the VSS admin command. Uh, you could do this on your own computer if you wanted to in the lab. So most server, uh, so most of the server roles that we've talked about in this course and the previous course uh, is stored in locations that are backed up if you were to perform a backup containing the system state. So if you were to choose system state, most of the information for the role will also get backed up. But some roles, features, and applications and services register themselves with, with uh, Windows Server Backup. Um, so you can recover application-specific data without having to do a more extensive recovery. Applications that have registered are listed in the select application window during recovery. It should be important to note that some of the services that we talk about um, have files that are not going to be in the system state. For example, if you have a web server, the uh, all the files that you reference, so the things that will get backed up with system state would be things like the virtual directories and virtual applications and the settings for those applications, but the actual files that, that it points to will not get backed up. You would still have to back up the volume uh, to capture those files. So if you were to try to recover, uh, it would recover with all the settings. But when you go to try to load a web page, it's going to say, I can't find the files that are associated with this web page. It knows there should be a web application called Y, but it can't find the files associated with it because you didn't back up those files. So it's important to understand the role and what it's doing and what types of data it has before you assume that it's going to work. Uh, in many cases, you're going to have to uh, back up that data as well. So these are some of the PowerShell commandlets uh, that you can run in the PowerShell for um, for Windows Server Backup. And uh, there's a couple pages of these in your textbook. In the uh, in the next slide presentation, we're going to talk about, or the next slide deck, I'm going to talk about Windows Server Recovery. So once we have these backups, that's great that you have the backups, but they're worthless to us if we don't know how to recover them. So let's cover that next.